Yorath. Adias. Knocked out of the way there by... Oh, a tremendous save by Gary. Steve Perryman with it. Hit towards Villa. Now towards Gibson, who popped up there with a the header. Chris Jones there. Gibson trying to get in once more. Ardenas with a chance! Well, he was beaten there. It wasn't a powerful shot from the little Argentine, but it left Bailey unsighted as the ball into the back of the net. Houston with the throw for Manchester United. Yorath with the header away. Bucket now for United. United's throw. Got it on there towards McQueen by Jordan. Comes out for Copperley. Blasted that well. Houston got in the way of it though. Wilkins now trying to go all the way. No, a little pass here for Jimmy Nicky. Crossed in once more, a deep one towards McQueen, who was pushed. And a penalty, I think, has been given, yes. The push on Gordon McQueen has planted the ball on the penalty spot. There's the push, and it looked a good one, it looked a good penalty. Now it's a question as to whether McElroy, well, I think the yellow card's coming up first for too many Spurs protests, and it might be Ardiles, the hero of a moment ago, indeed it is, Ardiles, who gets the yellow card for protesting too vehemently about that penalty. people would care to be in Sammy McElroy's shoes at this moment, or indeed in the shoes or boots of Melia Alexey. So, here we go then. Oh, a further delay, the ball not properly on the spot. with Gibson. But running into McQueen have brought him no profit. Villa with the shot just over. Oh, it's ricocheted. McElroy. A marvellous save. A marvellous save by Alexic. McElroy again supporting the attack from the midfield. The ball crossed by Jimmy Nickel. It broke for Manchester United, luckily, but McElroy was there in space, and really, Alexic... So much time for the cross. Oh, and uh, Jordan hit the goalkeeper then. He has been penalised. But interesting then, uh, Jordan's timing of that run. Because as he went in, the ball was uh, enticingly hanging in the air. I watched Jordan's run, gets past Miller, and hits the goalkeeper in the air. Tommy Kavanagh has finished treating him. Big Joe Jordan at the back by himself. And this a disaster for Spurs if they've lost the goalkeeper. And really, Alexic has had such a magnificent match. Perkinshaw turning away in disappointment, and so it looks as if the decision's been made to take the goalkeeper off. So who goes in goal? What a desperate blow for Spurs. Uh, John Pratt is the substitute, and I wonder if they'll put John in goal. He certainly has played in many positions for Spurs. And in fact, I think uh, that jersey is as much the problem as anything else they need a goalkeeper's jersey to 
just wondering if the fact they can't remove the jersey means that uh, he's got a shoulder or arm injury. Well, the man who really has been a hero for Spurs leaves the scene in such a tragic manner. And he really does deserve this applause. The goalkeeper's jersey's on the way. So who's going to take it? Uh, Terry Yoroth is at the centre of that group. And it looks like uh, Glenn Hoddle who's going in goal. Which is a measure of the size of this disaster for Spurs. The talented midfield and forward player Glenn Hoddle having to go into goal and on the pitch now is uh, John Pratt so Hoddle's uh, true versatility being tested in every sense here he's known as a versatile player he's certainly tall enough uh, but obviously with players like Jordan to test him in front he's going to have a hard time Jordan's been penalised for that uh, offence Head up, there is punch. Three minutes to go. Million for Spurs. No score in the match so far. Number seven, Ardiles. It's there. The Argentinian has done it. And Manchester United, three times in the last four years in the FA Cup final, face defeat in this third round with just two minutes left now in extra time. Martinez left with too much space and Spurs seem to have had to overcome the tremendous handicap they had in losing the goalkeeper. Villa there and it was a duet with the Argentinians. He spotted Ardiles with space and he got too much room and knocked it, bending it wide and failing. A magnificently taken goal which may well settle this cup top. Glenn Hoddle at the other end. Must believe it's not. Look at the watch, and it's all over. Spurs go through. A remarkable victory. Glenn Hoddle comes sprinting out of the goal. Having been in there for over an hour, in place of the uh, injured at Alexic, has got facial injuries, possibly a broken jaw. And Hoddle has managed to keep the score sheet clean, while Artinas, number seven, the little South American, who wants to go to Wembley to play the FA Cup final above all else, scored the goal that mattered with two minutes to go in extra time. Well, there aren't all that many Spurs fans here, but they've seen a night, and it's a true night for celebration. And our Dennis and Hoddle, well, perhaps you should uh, say these are the two outstanding men because Hoddle's getting the score sheet clean, while our Dennis is the only man of the uh, players on that field to get on the sheet. They're really celebrating in true style around the ground. Only their second... Searching forward by Roberts. Chris Hewton can pick it up over halfway. He comes from left full back. He's carried on his run as well. And he's in here, Chris Hewton, with a chance. And the goal! Tottenham get the breakthrough. Chris Hewton, who just kept on going and was picked out and fires it beyond wood and Spurs have the lead. Such a unlikely source. It's been the perfect start and could get even better. Breaking in numbers, Falco! Pick that one out. It's an absolute stunner from Mark Falco. It's a goal worthy of any occasion. And 
once again the long ball. This time searching for Alan Brazil. He's managed to get it overward, but unable to find the back of the net. Hansen with the shorter option. He continues his run again, Chris Hewton. It's to go for goal, it's three! And Chris Hewton's got another! Tottenham Hotspur are in Wonderland at the lane. Switching ball forward is cut out. It's a rarity for Arsenal to just uh, try and get some possession. They're in again here. This is Brazil. Can only find the side netting. It's the first half this is turning out to be for Tottenham Hotspur. Given away cheaply. Ramson can't keep it under control. Good hit, not a bad try as Wood tips it over. It is all Tottenham Hotspur. the free kick but decides to come in does he get there and Falco gets another an extraordinary afternoon at White Hart Lane and Tottenham Hotspur lead Arsenal now by four goals to nil A commanding header as Brazil is in here. Is this to be his moment to get on the score sheet to make it five? Brazil's first goal for Spurs. What an afternoon! This is turning out to be. Bridget tells a story. Well, another one here. This could quite easily turn out to be six. Brazil on the turn. Brilliant clearance off the line. They are rampant on them, Hotspur. Eventually comes in. We're going to get it away and to find Gibson. But that is going to be that in a fantastic afternoon for Tottenham Hotspur. Five goal winners, payback. Four leads in the middle of the field is, of course, how to cope without the creative talents of Tony Curry. And taken by Peter Taylor. Now a chance for Spurs to open it up. And beautifully taken. The referee just looking across to check with the linesman. But no doubt at all that... Peter Taylor having taken it away from Flynn at the pace to leave Paul Hart and then it was one on one against the goalkeeper and Taylor kept his head and rolled it into the corner so a worrying first half for Jockstein Ankin Taking on Perriman. Opponents to get through. That was Lorimer. That was the crossbar. Well, the odds were against Flynn, but he battled so well to get in the cross. And it was Peter Lorimer who met it. Danes was wrong footed and was saved by his crossbar. convincing punch it reached the edge of the penalty area Stevenson beautiful skills the hand like handball by Lee there was nothing wrong with the tackle Harris for Hank 
Watkins. Now Graham. Goal. Arthur Graham for Leeds. Two minutes into the second half and they find a way through. Harris, the originator. Too high for Hankin, but beautifully met on the volley by Arthur Graham. On for Perryman. Turning inside Frank Gray. Back for Ardiles. And a goal surely for Colin Lee. counter-attack Spurs get a goal which could be priceless to them and set up with a really fine drive at goal by Ardiles Harvey couldn't hold it open goal for Lee 2-1 good tackle by McAllister and Huddle setting Peter Taylor away and it's going in but he was always in a position then when the shot had to be catching Liverpool out in defence, giving uh, Galvin just a yard or so. And Robola pouring it away. Hobble. Brazil. And a free kick to Tottenham. It was more fortunate for Tottenham, really, than it spun nonetheless to Hoddle. Towards Archibald! season a Liverpool defence allows anybody as free as that on the edge of a six-yard area. Brazil's touch for Mavis. Oh, and for a moment, Lawrence have held off, and Archibald is through. Will it be number two? It is! A smile that says he scored twice in about three minutes against Liverpool and not many strikers in the course of a season can say that but a mistake it seemed to me by Lawrenson who didn't quite get to that one and suddenly Archibald is through and he kept his nerve brilliantly as Grobelar came out but a good strike. Caught it on the volley, and it was a dipper that we've seen often enough just slipping under the crossbar. It was a good effort. That's a fair shot. Have a training in a shot there. Hurriedly taken with the left foot, but powerful. Miller, Archibald. Foul on him by Alan Hansen. And we come to the last minute of the game. Hoddle finding Galvin wide on the right with Mavitz and Brazil waiting in the middle. A deep one towards Alan Brazil. Can he beat Phil Neal in the air? He can. Mavitt's in there. It comes for Archibald. Oh, and he thought a hat-trick was on there, but Grobelar was down like a hawk. You don't need me to tell you that we haven't really seen the best of Liverpool today. It was a fairly unnatural, caution-filled performance in the first half, and they've never really got into their stride after Archibald hit them for those two quick goals in the second half. 
victory for Spurs. A wait for Liverpool to see what's happened at Norwich, whether they are champions or whether they are not. Two goals by Steve Archibald put Spurs firmly on the road, up the table towards a place in Europe. A final score then here at White Hart Lane. Here's Galvin. Going pace to get into a good angle and Archibald! Steve Archibald, it's his 25th of the season, but none have been more important. Here's Clark, looking for Gray, jumping against Hooten, down for Hibbett! Wolves are level, and the scorer congratulates the man who set it up for him. The thumbs up from Gray. Hibbert. It's Hoddle who strikes it. Could be Wolves last throw here. And Clive Thomas has given a penalty. Now to try and protect a place in the final for Tottenham. Willie Carr to try and save the day for Wolves and take us to the extra 30 minutes, which he does. Again, Bird making a break on the right. A good dummy and a cross. Well knocked away by Perryman with the pressure still on as Foster goes driving down the right side. Plays it awfully. It's just a throw in. Now Mansfield beginning to exert some pressure on this Tottenham defence. They've had goals scored against them, Tottenham, in all the last 13 matches. Looks useful. Down. Chance for 
Dennis Martin to score his first goal for Mansfield since coming here from Newcastle. And he didn't get it. Bates, Dance makes the save. And Tottenham gather around there. Goalkeeper said, well done. And that makes Steve Perriman feel a lot better. Martin, a measured run, struck the ball firmly to the left. It looked very much like handball, no, and it was chest. It was chest, all right. I huddle. Dodgy thing to do in that circumstance, though, because uh, one fractional mistake, and it could have been hands instead of chest against Glenn Hoddle. Hodgson with the corner. Foster and Sinek. Swinging in from Hodgson. Foster, the man who got up above everybody and had a good whack at it with his head. And Sirrett, who finished it all off. So the corner. Holmes with it. That's a good one, too. That was handball on the blind side. That was handball on the line. Wood, surely. Got to be. Got to be. But the first handball has not been seen. He pointed for the penalty. Yes, he has. The penalty is given. So that corner comes swinging over from Jimmy Holmes. I must admit, I thought I saw a Tottenham player handle the ball. The shot is on target. Wood certainly handled on the line, and he knew it. He had to do it. So the penalty. And this the very spot, this the very goal in which Dennis Martin missed his penalty shot for Mansfield in the first half. It's Huddle against Arnold for 2-2. And that's the score. Glenn Huddle ties it up at 2-2. 36 minutes into the second half. Glenn Huddle's 11th goal of the season. And Tottenham back in the game at 2-2. save that one it was a well struck shot it's Taylor Stead Holmes it's Perryman oh bad ball straight to Hudson early on for Sirrett chance here Danes has come a long way and he's missed kicked and it's a hat trick for Sirrett Yes, sir! And Marsville back in front at 3 2. And Sirrett, Dave Sirrett, has picked himself up the match ball today with a hat trick. And the Mansfield fans are up and dancing all around the ground. What an incredible day for Dave Sirrett. All starting then with that bad pass from Perryman. Hodgson knocked it through. Danes comes screaming off his line, missed it, and Sirrett an empty net to slot his third goal of the game into. Sirrett is on the near post. As Hodgson tries to plant that one right in there, and Sirrett is there! And Foster was so close! But what about that for a perfectly taken corner? Hodgson gliding it in, Sirrett near post, the header away from Foster as he lunged in on my watch one minute to go Spurs 3-2 down here at Mansfield this could possibly be their last shot at goal Toddle and Taylor sorting the situation out what will they have? The sun out now for the first time this afternoon. Taylor on Hoddle. Trying to chip it straight in and he did! It's 3-3! Hoddle has scored his second goal of the game! And this incredible match has yet another spark point. That, with my watch, there was 30 seconds left when Glenn Hoddle strode up, measured it out, and planted that 
ball firmly into the top left hand corner. Great fight. Just nicking that away for our dealers. And played nicely away to ball there for Hazard. What good skill on the ground by young Mike Hazard. Crowd enjoyed it. His cross is a beauty now for Hunter. Played it again there. Oh, and a beautiful goal by Falco. What a magnificent goal by Tottenham. Falco on target again. But Hazard and Pottle between them. Absolutely superb in the building. Absolutely unstoppable. Hoddle and Hazard, who made the first goal for Falco, take one between them now. Hoddle's pass, and it's hit on the half volley after being chested down by Mike Hazard. Our dealers. Robertson. Caught in possession. Falco. Three. Thanks a lot. Well, the mistake was here as Robertson really gave it away. It fell into the path of Falco under the body of Shaw. Adilas gets it on to Galvin. There's nobody out wide on the right, so he turns back this way. Still Galvin. Now Hooten. Calvin puts it to Villa. Gets around Cherry and gets himself pulled down. Well, the Spurs crowd are furious. And that did look, I must say, from here as though Trevor Cherry hooks Villa's legs away from him after he'd been beaten inside the box. Graham for Leeds. Eddie Gray. Oof! Wild swing there from Paul Miller. Gray to take this free kick then for Leeds, the tenth of this first half. Knocked away by Roberts. And some desperate arguing now going on between the players. Eddie Gray's incensed. Roberts isn't happy. Three is Frankie Gray. Uh, Stevenson standing in front of the ball moves out of the way Frankie Gray oh a good hit and a good save by Clements Leeds worked the free kick so well Stevenson stood in front of the ball and Frankie Gray hit it through and Clements had to produce a good save that tremendous save by Ray Clements kept Tottenham alive in a first half in which they'd seemed to lack urgency but there was a new look about Spurs at the start of the second half. The deal is Cherry's head. That'll be a corner if it goes, and it did. Falco lifting his arms there. Crooks! Good save by Lukic. A point blank header for Garth Brooks. Where was the defender to deny him that? Did everything right, but Lukic had seen it and pushed it away off his chest. Tottenham's best chance coming right at the start of the second half. Perryman. Now Hoddle, in what has to say, has had somewhat of an indifferent game up to this stage. But that's a lovely ball for Falco. Falco! I suppose in that one moment we saw everything about Glenn Hoddle. He's not had a good game, 
but one pass there, the entire half length of the field, putting Falco free, he managed to get round hard and scooped it behind. coming on for his debut in the FA Cup. Oh, and a good ball, finds our dealers. Brooks, here, Hazard. Has he done enough? Galvin surely nods it back for Crooks. What a terrific goal by Tottenham. Garth Crooks breaks the deadlock, but the credit goes to Hazard, the substitute who came on just a few moments ago. And there's a feeling of relief, a marvellous bit of football by Hazard. He got free, he made space, he got the crossing. Galvin did the sensible thing, nodded it back to Crooks who knocked it past Lukic. 73 minutes gone and Spurs ahead 1-0. The goal they threatened all this second half. And White Hart Lane begins to celebrate. And this is Butterworth. Gray. Arthur Graham was onside. Oh, Butterworth threw himself at that. He'd only needed a touch. Substitutes are all about using them well and using them right. And Keith Birkenshaw takes full marks for putting on Mike Hazard. free kick just under a quarter of an hour remaining Frankie Gray to take this free kick for Leeds who pushed everybody forward Gary Hampson Burns Byron Stevenson this is Trevor Cherry who's looking up Paul Hall The goal yawned big and wide. The big man, Paul Hart, got in the header, but didn't direct it well enough. Now Galvin, pursued by Stevenson. And Burns has come across too. Mr. Chet. Chris Hutton, Hoddle. Waved on, Hazard to Ricky Villa. This is number two, surely. It hit Lukic's outstretched leg. And Spurs are now beginning to find space. And one can only think that Leeds have started to tire. Under relentless pressure. No offside. Hart. Well, Ricky Villa might feel that he should have done better with that chance a few moments ago when he could only knock the ball against Lukic's legs. Brooks gets a kick from Cherry. 
Hazard. Galvin's got free of Burns. Got to give it to Crook, surely. He should have given it to Garth Crooks. That should have been number two. Galvin robbing Kenny Burns. And we've gone into injury time. Gray with the free kick for Leeds. Looking for Paul Hart, who fell down. There's the final whistle. The Spurs go marching on. Tottenham with that goal by Garth Brooks in the second half. Beating Leeds 1-0. Hoddle. Well taken by Coates, well left by Huddle. His Moors. Well, he picked it out, but he put it wide. Good build up on the right involving Huddle and Ralph Coates. Coates taking it nicely in his stride and putting in a good cross, finding his man. Moors not quite finding the spot that he wanted. Chris Nicholas has come up. Dean. Fine goal by John Dean. Met firmly with his head. So a header at one end went wide. A header at the other end goes right from the free kick. Nickel had picked up a position far side and Dean met it so subtly much further up. Stead to the left. Now moving further forward. Model might try to curl one. And does. And makes it! Oh, beauty! Beauty! That is class. Beautifully done. Burridge had no chance. I would love to see the swerve and curl on that because it must have been quite considerable. There's Pratt. Armstrong! Two good saves. Huddle. And in the end, the soft did. So much power in that shot. Burridge simply put his fist there and knocked it straight out. Nickel, Huddle, Coates, Naylor. Armstrong, Huddle. When luck is so desperately needed, it won't come. Huddle's left foot effort rolling on the crossbar. Here's Huddle, here's Jones. Oh, yes! Oh, what about that? What about that? And look what it means. Just listen to what it means. It means that they've struggled off their knees to be back on their feet again. Whatever happens, whether they go down or not, they're going down fighting. Back in the lead with a goal by Chris Jones. A superb pirouette and a real crunch to the far corner. Here's Armstrong. Coates Taylor over this side, so is Pratt. Armstrong trying to find Taylor, and here he is, and that's another! And they're all vital! Goal difference could be so important. Although Tottenham's really, to be fair, is so bad. But it's on a par with West Ham's. Utter delight now. Taylor was free for an awful long time, and it finally came through to him. And he rifles home Tottenham's third goal of the match and to the cry of easy it go down well they're certainly fighting to maintain their balance and they will fight on scenes more usually associated with victory Keith Birkinshaw already disappearing to this is Brook and Hoddle and Archibald, yes, 
And that's the first time that Pat Jennings has been beaten as an Arsenal goalkeeper playing against Tottenham. But it really was a delightful ball from Puddle that found Steve Archibald. Brooke who started it, Puddle on the right, the deftest of crosses, and Archibald making it count with a fine crack. Five to run in. One of them is Archibald, they all left it, and in fact it was McAllister at the back, but straight into the body of Pat Jennings. But defenders then turned to look to see where it had gone and who was coming in. Arsenal lucky to survive. Yard. Not it down for Archibald. And he was leaning back a bit after he got the knock down from Miller. And the result was that the ball went up. He got to balance himself and find Stapleton. McDermott up as well. And there's getting blocked on the line, and Europe managed to push it away. Good play by Frank Stable, and he held it up, pulled it back. It was Gatting who had a stab. Two players on the line with their backs to the ball, and the ball came off one of them. And once again, Arsenal with uh, five players in the six-yard box. Huddle who got it away. Ricks is curler. Stapleton, fine save! Really a brilliant save that was by Barry Danes. That would have done credit to the man at the other end. Because Stapleton met that with full meat, knocked it down, and Danes held it with his right hand. Crooks down the middle. Archibald out to the right. It's got to be Archibald, and he's offside. It will not count. Kenny Sanson, who came back, made a despairing effort, not knowing the whistle had already gone. It looked the right ball, but Archibald had judged to have gone just too soon. Huddle. Finds Jareth. And a miss kick by the line. And Archibald gets a second. So it means that Tottenham have reversed completely the scoreline at Highbury in August. Devine just not making the touchback. And Archibald, who got a really good goal in the first half, gets a gift right at the end of the second. And just listen to the cheers. It matters almost as much as winning the cup. A Spurs goal provided a special moment for their young centre-half, Paul Miller. His first league goal, and what a good one it was there, bowling in Ricky Villar's corner. And it was a lead that Spurs added to in the second half. Osvaldo Ardiles, who had a fine game, breaking forward and brought down to give Spurs a penalty. Glenn Hoddle takes the kick, just squeezes it under John Shaw, and it's 2-0. But Spurs themselves conceded a penalty to let Bristol City back into the game. It was taken by their substitute, Tom Ritchie, and now it's 2-1. But there was time for Glenn Hoddle to add to his catalogue of brilliant goals this season. That header from Ardiles' cross. This time he's had a chance to run at anybody, but he ran straight at Perriman. McGavin. Spurs had to wait until their fourth game for their first league victory last season. And the season before, they had to wait until their fifth. Ball makes something of that. Need him forcing him away. Need support. Huddle coming square. First down crack to a ball. Not particularly well laid, actually. Oh, 
Forest Central defenders have made the odd mistake to worry Peter Shilton. Lacey. He's done well enough on his recall so far. Crooks. Via. Chris Hewton. Wearing three but playing at right back. Huddle. Oh, that might run for ideas. Was he pulled? Surely he was pulled. And the referee gives the penalty. No question that he was pulled by David Needham. Super through ball from Huddle. Peter Shilton goes to complain. But the only complaint that Forrest might have is that the first pull, which didn't bring the little fellow down, was outside the box but the one that really put him off balance was inside in my opinion and Glenn Hoddle has the chance from the penalty spot seven penalties he scored last season out of 22 and that's his first of this season so Tottenham's Top scorer of last season with that total of 22. Scores their first here. Sending Peter Shilton the wrong way. And that's awoken the crowd from its slumbers. by Smith and Tottenham pulling all back by Crooks Needham is up so is Boyer so is Kendall and Forrest have got three back Tottenham now four forward oh that's a great ball but it's just going to be reached by Shilton. Another good through ball by Huddle. He didn't get many through in the first half, but already played two very useful ones in this. <laughs> then Huddle's ability to clip the ball first time forward to these front players is going to be a useful weapon for Tottenham. Robertson, Hewton arrived just in time. There we are side flag anyway in by Archibald on Needham. Forrest really yet to suggest that they're going to pull back this goal deficit. They haven't really seen much of them as an attacking force. They've been a, a bit of a, an odd assortment. Kick from further back, I think. Archibald took it well having seemingly lost it here is Hoddle, there is Crooks but Burns was in the way and nobody coming in behind Crooks Adias and he's getting nearer good play by Tottenham they might have done with giving Crooks more support with the ball in the air and Adias shot in the end just curling away about the crossbar Perryman, Huddle, Adias. It 
Smith. doing some sort of version of the Swiss hold. He'll be playing for his country against England at Wembley in November. Hewton. Huddle. Archie Ball's back header, miss kick. Oh, fine shot on the turn by Crooks, the miss kick was by Burns. And they've done enough, these front players for Tottenham, to cause a number of errors in the centre of the Nottingham Forest defence. control to put it away and to put the match I think out of Nottingham Forest reach I think too it's fair to say that 2 nothing is a justifiable scoreline on the balance of play uh, Brian Clough looks as though he's going to have defeats in the first match Wallace again it's too far away from Boya he's got a lot of do to turn and he does well did extremely well then Boya because it was running away clipped it back almost back from the angle from which he'd come and it was the head of Bertels that just wasn't able to put it in as Tottenham had given it up I think of concentration in the Spurs defence who obviously felt like I did that Boya wasn't going to be able to make it Needham Lacey away Frank Gray Robertson Smith to him this time Hewton behind go kick Robertson goes to kick the ball it's not really had a very happy opening 90 minutes to a season and Spurs making a substitution it's Ozzy Ardias who's got on and replaced by the Irishman Jerry Armstrong now shouting there's only one Ardias and he's certainly done enough and acknowledging the applause Gray Long run for Ponte, but he makes it. Wallace, denied by Perryman, still gets the chance. And more than a little unlucky. He certainly battled without finding too much success. satisfactory opening performance by Tottenham, highlighted by the individual goal from Garth Crooks, added to the one score from the penalty spot by Huddle, after Ardias had been mauled down. 
scored 22 last season. He scored their first this. Crooks followed it. Forrest, very disappointing, with only the performance of Ponte, I would think, to freeze Brian Clough and Peter Taylor. 2-0, the final score to Spurs, who get off to a winning start. Eighth minutes, Garth Crooks carrying on from where he left off against Nottingham Forest last weekend. From the corner on the right, Crook gets above Tonnerman to score a fine goal. By the 20th minute, he'd seemingly put the match beyond Palace's reach. A nice layoff from Steve Archibald and Crooks's third goal in only two games explains why Spurs fans believe their lean years may now be over. The fans couldn't have wished for better entertainment, but by the end of the night there was ample evidence that both managers have their defensive problems. Here Smiley breaks on the right, the centre finds Hilaire, he makes space, and although there's a deflection, he took the goal well. Spurs quickly restored the two-goal margin. Archibald again involved in the build-up, and this was vintage Glenn Hoddle. The goal almost an actual replay of a number of his efforts last season. But still, Palace didn't give up. Great perseverance here from young Neil Smiley. He makes the opening, and that's a fine opportunist effort. But that was the cue for the other half of Spurs' expensive striking duel, Steve Archibald, to get in on the act. Watch the tremendous acceleration and the perfect finish, his first goal for Spurs. Palace responded with this chip from skipper Jim Cannon, but that was where the scoring ended. 4-3 to Spurs. And now trying to release Vili or Hoddle having a marvellous game. And Crooks! Well, he's amazing! His fourth goal in his third game. So it's Gregory. And Foster having it knocked off his head. McHale turning back in again. And Gordon Smith with a chance. And has made it 1-1. A really soft goal. Spurs are looking about them. I think they felt they may have been an offside. Pelia. Still 25 minutes to go. Still 1-1. Pelia to Archibald. An advantage played there. And Pelia and Archibald getting in each other's way. That might come for Ardiles, a little touch there for Crooks. And will it come for Hoddle? Oh, a goal! Keeper's mistake, Hoddle's goal. Ward. Oh, and Smith on his way again. And he's got an equaliser. 2-2, and Gordon Smith has done it again. Again, that ice-cool finishing that we saw right on the stroke of half-time. My word, he does take his time, Gordon Smith. Again, good approach play by Tottenham. Here's Hoddle. Moore's got up there. Lee got it. Taylor shaking off Gould. Four Tottenham players ahead of him. Five now that Hoddle's made a run down the right. This is how the second goal came, really. Taylor! Peter Taylor makes it three. McAllister. Oh, lovely dummy by Peter Taylor. He's got four in the middle as well. Oh, they all miss it, and Morris! Morris put it in! It's Pratt getting in, Lee is there again! He's got it! It's a hat-trick! McNabb. Taylor leaving it. Moores is through. <laughs> Has to be said without taking anything at all away from Tottenham that Bristol Rovers looked a very poor side 
especially in defence. And as Moore's on again here for the hat trick. He's got it. He's got his third as well. Oh, and John cracks away. Lee is in the middle. Taylor trying to get there. It's going to come to Taylor now. It's come to Lee. Eight.